Gentlemen, why wasn't this news released? Because it would create public hysteria. There would be an absolute panic. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. There'd be riots in the streets. It would make an invasion from Mars seem like a Sunday school picnic. Theater 5 presents The New Order. Gentlemen. Oh, thank you, Mr. Garson. Thank you. I'm John Clements, and this is my assistant, Sam Winston. How do you do? As you know, we're from the National Board. And what can we at Robots Unlimited do for you? Well, of course, you're aware that there's a new investigation of robotry. <laughs> there's always a new investigation of robots and Robots Unlimited, gentlemen. I just hope I haven't accidentally broken the rules of the Charter. No, no, nothing like that. In fact, we wish all government departments were run as efficiently as this one. Well, thank you. Actually, we're here, Mr. Garson, because people are, well, they're getting very worried about robotry. Worried? It goes even deeper than that. They're afraid of the newest robots. Well, there's no reason to fear robots. I doubt we can convince people of that. At one time, a robot was a mechanical man with flashing lights for eyes, antennae for ears, and, well, he was obviously a robot. But now you can't tell a mechanical man from a human. Except through dissection. No, there is another way, gentlemen. A robot is different from a human being because it does not know how to hate. And most important, it cannot bring harm to any human. Now, this is an integral part of the robot makeup. In fact, it's the first law of robotics. And that's precisely why we're here, Mr... Oh, excuse me. Yes, Garson here. Mr. Garson, Adam C. is ready for testing. Have Adam C. wait, please. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, would you like to see an interesting test? What kind of test? Well, Adam C. is an R4 robot. I thought all R4s were supposed to be destroyed. Yes, that is, the charter states that when a robot type becomes obsolete, it should be destroyed. Why hasn't that been done? Well, the charter also gives a time limit for possible modification. So I've been working on the R4s. You see, there are two basic differences between the R4s and the R5s. The R4 voice was metallic, and it had a sort of built-in echo. But the R5 voice is as human as yours or mine. The other difference is, well, I'll call it the nervous system, connecting the brain to the voice box. Well, in the R4, the working of the brain was not attuned to the voice box. The R4 could solve problems, but could not transmit the answers locally. This, of course, made the R4 a worker with a very limited capacity and range. The R5, however, solves problems and then gives the answers. Or it transmits the answers into action, just as a human would. And have you managed to alter the R4 enough to meet the new specification? Yes, yes. Adam C. will be the 15th XR4 I've tested. The others have all met the new specifications. According to the terms of the charter, if Adam C. passes his tests, I'll have the right to modify all other R4s. There's a total of 528 of them. Well, gentlemen, would you like to see the test? Yes, I would. Yes, so would I. Good. I'm sure you'll find it quite absorbing. Oh, please send Adam C. in. Yes, Mr. Garson. Oh, gentlemen, would you like a cigarette? Oh, thank you. No, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Adam C. as I would a, a human. I, I ask you to cooperate. Are you trying to tell us that robots have feelings? Well, not as we know feelings, no. But their tuning can be upset by, well, unexpected rudeness, for example. Oh, come in. Adam C. reporting his orders, Mr. Garson. Oh, Adam C., this is Mr. Clements and Mr. Winston. They are government investigators. I'm honored to know you, gentlemen. Uh, how, how do you do? Pleased to meet you. Now, Adam C.? Yes, Mr. Garson. Do you understand why you're here? Yes, sir. Tell me, please. I was an R4 robot. You have had me modified to meet the specifications of the R5 robot. If I do not meet all the specifications, I will be destroyed along with all other R4 robots. All right. Now, the first test is memory retention. Now, I'm going to open this book. You will read the page on the right-hand side. You'll have only three seconds. Ready? Yes, Mr. Garson. Start reading. All right. Adam C., in your opinion, what kind of book is this? It seems to be a work of fiction. Now, be more specific, please. I cannot be more specific, Mr. Garson. It seems to be a work of fiction. 
However, it could also be a biography, or it could be history done in a fictional style. Very good. And now I want you to read from memory the 19th and 20th lines on that particular page. The lines are a piece of dialogue, quote, I don't like the idea of Ferguson and Martin meeting as equals, Kramer declared, adding in a low voice, their ideologies are simply not compatible, unquote. Fine. And now, gentlemen, would you like to see the page? Yes. All right. Well, here's the book, Mr. Clements. Page 47. Oh, thank you. Now, oh, let's see. That's right. Count down to the 19th line. I think you'll find that Adam C. read word for word that line and the one that follows. Huh. You know, this is amazing. It's not just amazing. It's completely incredible. Incredible? No, no, Mr. Winston. You see, the robot brain is uncluttered with irrelevancies. What's the next test, Mr. Garson? Mental arithmetic. Uh, may I give Adam C. the problem? Oh, by all means. Please do. Um, can I have that piece of blank paper on your desk? Oh, sure. There you are. Thank you. Adam C.? Yes, Mr. Clements? I want you to solve this arithmetic problem for me. Yes, sir. Um, multiply 7,927 by 4,684. And then I want you to divide the total by 424. That is the problem, Mr. Clements? Yes. The answer is 87,570, plus the fraction 97, 106. <laughs> well, Mr. Clements? I, uh, I haven't figured it out for myself yet. Well, I'm sure you'll find that Adam C.'s answer is correct. Well, here's the total of the multiplication. 37,130,068. Correct, Mr. Clements. You, uh, you can prove the answer quite simply by... Yes, right. yes, I know how, Mr. Garson. Well, Adam C., if Mr. Clements finds your answer to be correct, you may return to the waiting room for further instruction. Yes, Mr. Garson. Uh, well, the answer is correct, all right. That'll be all, Adam C. Goodbye, Mr. Garson. Gentlemen, being with you has been a pleasure. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> Makes one feel rather inferior, doesn't it? Uh, Mr. Garson... Before this uh, test, we were speaking about the first law of robotics. Oh, yes, yes, so we were. Well, I think we're all aware of the fact that without this safeguard of the first law, Robots Unlimited would never have been granted a charter. In fact, the manufacture of human-type robots would not have been permitted. That's true. However, there is one man who can alter this first law, Professor Albert Dean, inventor of the human-type robot. And Professor Dean has been missing for the past five days. Missing? He disappeared from his home five days ago. Why wasn't this news released? Because the newspapers would pull out all the stops. There'd be panic. For the same reason, we didn't release another fact. That Professor Dean had been experimenting with a new robot. One to which the first law of robotics does not apply. You can imagine what the newspapers would do with that. Yes. This new robot type... Did you know that Professor Dean was working on it? Well, yes, I did. I, well, at least there was a rumor to that effect. Mm, and uh, did you approve? Well, it makes small difference how I felt, Mr. Clements. The matter was out of my hands. Professor Dean wasn't and isn't under my supervision. Yes, well, that's true enough. He was our responsibility. Mr. Garson, you were selected as General Manager of Robots Unlimited because of your excellent record in government service. Your background of loyalty is impeccable. Thank you, but what is it you're trying to say, Mr. Clements? We're expecting that you'll cooperate with us in this matter. Well, of course. Just tell me what it is that you want me to do. Well, at the moment, Winston and I would like the run of this building and the grounds. Very well. Feel free to go anywhere. Then, later on today, we'll probably have another talk with you. Any time at all. Good. I don't think I have to tell you how important it is that we find Professor Dean as soon as possible. Now, that's rather obvious, Mr. Clemens. The professor's knowledge of robotics can be a very dangerous thing. If, for instance, he were kidnapped by a foreign power. Exactly. Well, thank you for everything. Uh, gentlemen, if there's anything else that you need, just let me know. We will, and uh, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Garson here, calling Frank B. This is Frank B., Mr. Garson. Did you monitor my conversation with the government investigators? Yes, sir. Do you have any orders concerning them? Just this. Cooperate with them in every way, but watch them carefully. Very carefully. <laughs> 
Yes, Garson here. Frank B. reporting, Mr. Garson. Investigator Clements has found his way into the corridors beneath the building. He is now in the restricted area. What are your orders? Have some R5 standing by. I'll take care of this myself. Oh, Mr. Clements. Huh? Uh, what? Well, you should have told me you wanted to come down here. I'd have provided you with a guide. I just wanted to have a look around. But you could get lost in this maze of passages. Uh, what's that? What? That tapping. Tappings? Uh, there it is again. It's coming from behind this wall. Mr. Garson, there's someone behind this wall. Oh, I'm sorry you felt you had to come down here, Mr. Clemens. I insist that you... There's tell no me... need to insist. There are rooms behind this wall. How do we get to them? Simply by moving this panel. It's a cell. Who, who's that? Come along, Mr. Clements. Meet Professor D. As you can see, the professor is unharmed. Why do you have him tied and gagged? Because he knows certain words that activate the robots. Oh. Here they come now. Mr. Garson, I insist that you release Professor D. I'm sorry. No. I... Only you two. Come now, put away that gun. What do you want us to do, Mr. Garson? Take Mr. Clements to a cell. No, no, they can't carry out that order. Why not, Mr. Clements? Because of the first law of robotics. Robots aren't permitted to harm humans. But they don't intend to harm you. Hey, let me go. See, they're gentle, but very strong. Take him away, please. You better have a good answer for all this, Garson. Well, I think I do. <laughs> Yes, Professor Dean. Oh, believe me, we don't enjoy keeping you prisoner. And we'll set you free just as soon as you change your mind. No. No. Well, I'm a patient man, Professor. The emergency alarm. Mr. Garson, please come to your office. Yes, Frank B., what is it? We found Agent Winston in the file room. How did he get in there? It must have happened while you were downstairs with Mr. Clements. I detailed some R5s to help you. There was a mistake in the assignments, and the file room was left unguarded for a moment. He must have slipped in. Where is he now? In the waiting room. Mr. Garson, I think you better tell these robot friends of yours to let me go. I'm afraid that's not possible, Mr. Winston. Now look, the kid gloves are off. I suggest that you cooperate and tell us all you know. It'll go a lot easier with you. You see... I had a good look through your files. So? I found a lot of information on Professor Dean, incidentally. Uh, do we have to speak in front of these robots? Why? Do they make you nervous, Mr. Winston? Yes, they do. But why? Have you forgotten the first law of robotics? They can't harm you. However, if you insist, I'll ask them to leave. Oh, Frank B., if you don't mind. Not at all, Mr. Garson. We'll go... Now, Mr. Winston, we were speaking about Professor Dean in the files. Please go on. After I read through certain papers in the files, it looked to me like a fantastic plot was taking form. A plot? Against our government in particular and against humanity in general. Well, that is fantastic, Mr. Winston. Now, please don't act so charmingly coy, Mr. Garson. You're part of it. You've got to be. How could Robots Unlimited be plotting against the government? Our our fives are unable to harm humans. Well, the first law of robotics is an inherent part of their makeup. And don't forget, if we were using robots to overthrow the government, well, we'd have the army to contend with. The first law would operate against us. Mm-hmm, that's what you want people to think. Yes, the R-5s obey the first law. And while the first law applies, you can't carry out your plan. That's where Professor Dean comes in. Oh? The professor was working on a new robot model when he disappeared. A model that does not obey the first law. A robot that would carry out an order to kill. Ah, now we begin to see the ramifications of this fantastic plot. Huh? You have 800 R5s and more than 500 R4s that you're modifying. Now, that doesn't take into account the robots you're probably manufacturing in secret. In secret? Oh, you didn't see that in the file. Well, I saw enough to put you on trial for treason. If I'm to be executed as a traitor, why should I help you? 
I told you. We can make it easier for you. <laughs> By we, I assume you mean Mr. Clements and yourself. That's right. Ah, uh, but I'm afraid Mr. Clements is in no position to help anyone. What do you mean? Listen. Garson here. Connect me with Mr. Clements' cell, please. Cell? You're connected, Mr. Garson. Clements? Clements, this is Garson. Garson, listen to me. If you don't let me out of this cell, so help me, I'm... Well, I trust that convinces you, Mr. Winston. You see, your friend Clements made the mistake of wandering into a restricted area, just as you did. Who's giving the orders? You or Professor Dean? Professor Dean is in the cell next to Clements. I should have known. You kidnapped him. Yes. The professor was not amenable to my plan. You see, Professor Dean not only made a robot that did not obey the first law, but in doing so, he found a way to nullify the first law in other robots. And has he told you how to do it? He can't have. Not if you've got him in a cell. He will. And then I'll nullify the first law in all robots. And as they're tuned to my voice, they will obey my orders. Oh, by the way, there's something that isn't in the file room. I don't have to manufacture robots in secret factories. Robots can reproduce themselves. It's very simple. Each robot will manufacture another. Double a penny 30 times, Mr. Winston, and you get over a million pennies. In no time at all, I'll have a huge army of indestructible machines. What's happened to you, Garson? No one in government service had a better record than you. You were the last man we thought would turn true. You don't know me very well, Mr. Winston. That's just about the biggest understatement I've ever heard. <laughs> and we thought Professor Dean was the security risk. The professor has an IQ of 195, yet he's a fool. By helping me, he could be the most powerful man in the world. I cannot understand men like him, or you. Spoken like a true paranoiac. <laughs> Isn't it strange? You devise a perfect form of government, an infallible method of controlling the world, and you're called insane. Remember, Mr. Winston, robots are not susceptible to bribery. They can't be blackmailed, or intimidated, or flattered, or fooled. Can you say the same about our politicians and government office holders, can you? No, nope, uh, we're all fallible. And you're at least as fallible as the rest of it. No, and what makes you say that? Because you're wrong. Your plan just won't work. Why not? Because your plan depends on Professor Dean. He's a dedicated scientist. He knows that if he alters the first law of robotics, whatever happens will be his responsibility. This is why he won't help you. No matter what you do to him. Ah, but he will help me for the simple reason that he is only human. Sooner or later, he'll weaken. It's only a matter of time. You're fast running out of time, Mr. Nothing Garson. Nothing can stop me. Well, maybe I can. <laughs> Ah, uh, what good is locking that door going to do? I'm going to kill you, Mr. Garson. No, a gun, just like Clements. You all run so true to form. Put it away. You leave me no alternative but to kill you. Do you think shooting me will stop my plan? Without you, the robots would have no leader. And they won't do anything to me for killing you because they'll obey the first law. Ah, I see your reasoning. You think you'll get rid of me and then free the professor and Clements. No, Garson, don't move toward me. <laughs> what are you afraid of? You have a gun. Don't take another step. Well, shoot, Mr. Winston. Shoot! All right! <laughs> I hit you with every shot. Everyone! You... You must be... A robot? Yes. Yes, I am. You see, the real Garson is dead. I had my face made in his image. When you and Clements are dead, two robots will be made in your image. The same thing will ultimately happen to the professor. That's my real plan, Mr. Winston. Robots won't have to fight the army or anyone else. We'll just step into your shoes, each and every one of you. But you haven't found a way to nullify the first law yet. Not yet. Until you do, a robot can't kill. It must obey the first law. All but one robot, Mr. Winston. The one Professor Dean made just before he disappeared. The robot to which the first law of robotics does not apply. You. You. Yes. You. I... I am that robot, Mr. Winston. Theater 5 has presented The New Order, written by Don Harry and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Jay Barney, Bob Dryden, Jack Manning, Jack Grimes, and Owen Jordan. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. 
We would appreciate your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. Thank <laughs> you.